Добрый день. Good day, everyone. В этой лекции, In this lecture, using the example of Labor Code of Russian Federation, we will talk about how the government protects its employees. Let's analyze the problem of child labor in Russia. We will discuss the social protection of pregnant women. Special attention in the lecture will be paid to the labor protection of the medical workers. We will learn about the adverse physical, chemical, biological and psychological factors that affect the medical worker. At the end of the lecture, we will talk about the possibilities for creating comfortable and safe working conditions for medical workers. More than 2 million people die every year from diseases associated with unfavorable working conditions. More than 300 million accidents occur in the workplace every year. Every 15 seconds, one worker dies at his workplace due to accidents. According to the Constitution of the Russian Federation, every resident has the right to work in safe conditions. This right is also enshrined in the labor legislation of the Russian Federation. The Ministry of Labor and Social Protection of the Russian Federation is responsible for monitoring working conditions. Let's talk about the rights of an employee using the example of Russian legislation. The Labor Code of the Russian Federation says that every employee has the right to a workplace that meets safety requirements. Every employee must be insured against an accident at the workplace and an occupational disease. Each employee has the right to information about working conditions, health risks and preventive measures. If a person's work is dangerous to health or life, the employee must receive monetary compensation for harmful and dangerous working conditions. Workplaces should be provided with means of individual and collective protection. Protective equipment should be provided to the employee free of charge, and each employee should receive additional professional training free of charge. If the workplace was liquidated, that reduced due to violation of working conditions, the dismissed employee must receive compensation or be transferred to another safe workplace. Any employee has the right to request a safety check of working conditions at his workplace. An employee has the right to receive assistance, advice, additional information from the government or trade union on the safety of his work. An employee is entitled to guarantees of compensation if his work was harmful or dangerous. Information about compensation should be written in the employment contract. If a safety check is carried out at the place of work or an accident or an occupational disease, is being investigated. If a safety check is carried out at the place of work or an accident or an occupational disease is being investigated, the employee has the right to be present at the work of the commission that deals with this. If an employee cannot be present at the inspection of his workplace or during the investigation of an accident or occupational disease, the employee has the right to send his representative. Medical examinations of the employee should be free of charge. In addition, on the day of passing the medical examination, the employee must receive his the employee must receive his average salary. If an employee has doubts about his own health, he has the right to an extraordinary medical examination. The commission periodically certifies workplaces. During the certification of a workplace, the commission looks for places where it is possible to get injured during work. The commission determines the severity and intensity of the work. The employee's salary depends on these indicators. The commission finds out the presence of harmful and dangerous factors at the workplace. The certification commission determines whether it is possible to work at this workplace or whether it is safe. The certification commission determines whether it is possible to work at this workplace, whether it is safe. The Commission also develops recommendations for improving working conditions. Harmful and dangerous factors in the workplace can lead to poor health, occupational disease, cause injuries, poisoning and other problems, sometimes even death. Harmful factors are divided into physical, chemical, biological and psychophysiological. 
and sometimes a combination of all of them is possible. There are several directions for protecting employees from harmful factors. This can be an improvement in the technological process. For example, the use of less toxic chemicals. This can be time protection. The employee should not come into contact with harmful substances for a long time. This can be a distance protection. The further the employee is from the source of harmful factor, the less harmful the impact will be. You can use collective protection equipment. This is equipment that protects several tens or hundreds of employees at the same time. For example, a good ventilation system or thick walls will be a good collective protection against toxic substances and radioactive radiation. Personal protective equipment includes gas masks and protective suits. They only protect one person. What should I do if there was an accident? Well, first of all, you need to provide first aid to the victim. You also need to protect other people. For example, to block the gas pipe or turn off the equipment. For a successful investigation of an accident, it is necessary not to change anything at the place where the accident occurred. If this is not possible, you need to take a lot of photos and of course, you need to inform the boss. If during an accident, the number of victims is more than two people or there is a serious injury or death, you also need to notify the police, the trade union and the Department of Labor Protection the Ministry of Labor and Social Protection. Discrimination in employment is prohibited in Russia. This means that when applying for a job, it is forbidden to refuse employment because of nationality, gender or skin color. Of course, some types of work may be prohibited for certain categories of citizens. For example, a pregnant woman is forbidden to work with toxic chemicals. It is also forbidden to take women to work if you need to lift heavy objects weighing more than 15 kilograms during work. But this is not discrimination. This is considered a concern for the health of women. Forced labor is prohibited in the Russian Federation. Slavery in Russia was abolished in 1861. In the Russian Federation, people can legally work from the age of 13. Work for 13-year-olds is possible only with written consent from parents or guardians. This work is possible only during the time free from study. And such work should be temporary, safe for the health and development of the child. Starting from the age of 15, you can get a permanent job if it does not interfere with your studies. Teenagers are prohibited from working in conditions of increased health risk. In order to increase the birth rate, the government provides social protection for pregnant women. If a woman is pregnant, it is forbidden to prematurely terminate an employment contract with her. A pregnant woman receives a sick leave 70 days before the expected time of birth of the child and within 140 days receives her average salary while at home. This period may be extended for medical reasons. A woman can take a leave of absence to care for a child for a year and a half. And during this period, the woman will receive a child care allowance from the state. A woman can be on parental leave for up to three years. But in this case, her allowance is not paid. But the jobs are saved for her. After leaving the parental leave, the woman returns to her own workplace. Also in Russia, a woman who has given birth to a second child receives a bonus of about half a million rubles from the state. This money can be used to improve the quality of life of the child or for his education. Now we will talk about the harmful factors associated with the work of medical personnel. All harmful factors in the work of medical personnel are divided into three classes. Class A are harmful factors associated with work process. These can be physical, chemical and biological factors. Class B are harmful factors that relate to improper organization of work. Class C are harmful factors associated with unfavorable working conditions. 
Now we will talk about these harmful factors in more detail. Class A includes, for example, mechanical injuries. In the work of a doctor, especially a surgeon, there are a lot of sharp objects with which you can injure yourself. Therefore, while working, we must be careful. The physical factors also include ionizing radiation. In medicine, we use x-rays and other types of radiation. The adverse effect of ionizing radiation is associated with the rupture of compounds inside the molecules. DNA damage is especially dangerous. Destroying healthy tissues, ionizing radiation creates biologically active substances and free radicals, which in turn disrupt the normal functioning of the body, causing metabolic disorders. There are four ways to protect against radiation. The first is dose protection. You need to get as little radiation dose as possible. Second, time protection. It is necessary to contact with ionizing radiation as little as possible. Therefore, radiologists in the Russian Federation have a short working day and a long vacation. They also stop working and retire earlier. Third, distance protection. A person should be as far away from the source of ionizing radiation as possible. Fourth, screen protection. To protect against different types of ionizing radiation, different materials for screens are required. For protection against x-rays and gamma radiation, it is best to use lead. To protect against beta radiation, iron or aluminium is used. To protect against neutron radiation, it is better to use synthetic polymers. Another harmful physical factor that can negatively affect the health of medical personnel is the electromagnetic field. The electromagnetic field is generated by many electrical devices. The electromagnetic field creates thermal and non-thermal effects. The thermal effects is the heating of the body tissues. The thermal effect depends on the frequency of the electromagnetic field and the distance to its source. If the frequency is higher and the distance is shorter, then the thermal effect is greater. Non-thermal effects include asthenovegetative syndrome, which can develop after exposure to an electromagnetic field. Asthenovegetative syndrome will be manifested by fatigue, pain in the heart, a decrease in blood pressure, a decrease in the pulse rate. The electromagnetic field can also cause cataracts, clouding of the lens. The electromagnetic field can destroy hair follicles and lead to baldness. The electromagnetic field disrupts the work of the endocrine glands. First, there is a stimulation of the endocrine gland and then later suppression of their function. The electromagnetic field also has a weak mutagenic and carcinogenic effect. It is best to protect yourself from the electromagnetic field by increasing the distance to its source by using screens such as metal plates or metal mesh. We do not only need to work in the physiotherapy department of the hospital in order to feel the harmful effects of electromagnetic field. There are always other powerful sources of electromagnetic fields near us. For example, mobile phones or Wi-Fi. The electromagnetic field generated by these devices cause similar health disorders. Therefore, we are not recommended to store a mobile phone in a breast pocket near to the heart or in the trouser pocket. The mobile phone should be as far away from our body as possible. In addition, a mobile phone with one SIM card is less dangerous to health than phones with two or more SIM cards. And a regular phone with buttons is less dangerous than a smartphone. Ultrasound is absolutely safe for the patient. It is used even during pregnancy and this does not create problems. But ultrasound is harmful for the medical personnel who work with it. Patients come for an ultrasound examination once every few months and the doctor works with ultrasound every day. Exposure to low intensity ultrasound damages the peripheral nervous system, causes vasospasm disrupts the blood supply to the fingers. As a preventive measure, it is recommended to use gloves that will reduce the intensity of ultrasound exposure. It is also recommended to reduce the working time with ultrasound. Massage. 
warm or hot water help expand the vessels and restore normal blood supply to the fingers. Cold air in the room or washing your hands with cold water can increase the negative impact of ultrasound. High intensity ultrasound is used in physiotherapy, surgery and water disinfection. Exposure to high intensity ultrasound causes thermal, mechanical and chemical effects. It has a destructive effect on the tissues of the human body. Vibration, like ultrasound, damages the peripheral nervous system and circulatory system. Under the influence of vibration, dystrophic changes occur in bones and muscles. Joints are deformed as well. Dentists most often encounter vibration in their work. Preventive measures are the same as when exposed to ultrasound. Gloves, breaks during work, massage, hot water and exercise. The effects of noise exposure can be divided into specific and non-specific. Specific effects include dysfunction of the acoustic analyzer, decreased hearing acuity. For a relatively low noise level, which is found in the hospital, non-specific effects are more characteristic. Non-specific effects include the excitation of areas of the cerebral cortex. This leads to irritation, emotional instability, decreased attention, decreased memory, and decreased ability to work. The noise causes excitation in the hypothalamus. This leads to an increase in the level of adrenaline and stress reaction in the body. Arousal can also be transmitted to the spinal cord. This leads to disruption of the autonomic nervous system. If a person works at a high noise level, he has an increased risk of gastritis, heart attack, and hypertension. The medical staff is also affected by harmful factors of a chemical nature. There is a large amount of chemicals in any hospital. They can be in various forms, vapors, gases, aerosols, or dust. These chemicals can cause allergies, dermatitis, or bronchial asthma. To combat this problem, it is recommended to use ventilation, properly store medicines in hemimetical to combat this problem, it is recommended to use ventilation, properly store medicines in hermetically sealed boxes. Medical personnel are also affected by harmful factors of a biological nature. Patients release bacteria, viruses and protozoa into the environment. Also, the risk of helminthiasis or fungal diseases is increased for doctors. Prevention of infectious diseases the process of spreading infection or infectious processes consists of three parts. In order to prevent the spread of an infectious disease, it is enough to eliminate one of these three. The first part is the source of the infection. We can isolate and cure the patient. The second part is the transmission path. There are different transmission paths. For example, the influenza virus is characterized by an airborne transmission pathway. In order to prevent the transmission of the flu virus, we can ventilate the room, turn on the ultraviolet lamp, put on a mask, keep a safe distance from the patient. The third part is a sensitive organism. We can make the body not sensitive to this virus, for example, by applying vaccination. Vaccination is a specific type of protection, but we can increase the non-specific resistance of our body by using immune stimulants, proper nutrition, and a healthy lifestyle. The next group of unfavorable factors associated with the work of a doctor are factors related to the incorrect organization of the workflow. A big problem for a doctor is the unpredictability of the working day, the lack of a work schedule. The doctor never knows when and with what diagnosis the patient should contact him. The work of a doctor is characterized by excessive intensity and duration. A doctor cannot stop operating on a patient just because his working day is over. Also, the work of a doctor is characterized by excessive psycho-emotional load. Each patient comes to the doctor with his own problem. Every patient wants his problem to be solved immediately. It is most difficult to work with children and with the elderly. Also, the work of a doctor is characterized by an overload of individual organs and systems. 
vision is particularly affected. Therefore, the doctor needs to protect his eyes, limit, if possible, working with a computer and watching TV. It is advisable to do special exercises to strengthen vision. Another problem of the doctor is the forced position of the body. This problem is most typical for a surgeon who is forced to stand next to the operating table for a long time in the uncomfortable position. This leads to a violation of the blood supply to the legs, varicose veins. Also, surgeons are characterized by problems with the spine, a high risk of osteochondrosis. To prevent this problem, it is necessary to find time for a break and rest. Swimming and other sports are very helpful as well. Monotony of work. This problem is typical mainly for radiologists or bacteriologists. In this case, the working day is very monotonous. This causes some psychological problems. Now about the working conditions. A good relationship between people in a team, the presence of good motivation, preferably positive and internal, will increase a person's performance and strengthen his health. Working conditions will also include such indicators as microclimate and illumination. If a person works in comfortable condition, it will increase his efficiency and reduce the risk of many diseases. Thus, comfortable working conditions not only increase the positive emotions for us, but also increase our ability to work, reduce the risk of diseases. Now we will talk about how to create comfortable working conditions. Our body has an extremely low coefficient of efficiency, 20%. It is about the same as that of a steam engine. Only 20% of our energy is spent on work. The remaining 80% is excess heat that must be removed from the body. We can give the excess heat to the air. In this case, the heat transfer will depend on the temperature, humidity and air velocity. The higher the humidity, the higher the speed of air movement and the lower the temperature, the more heat our body will give to the air around us. The second way is the evaporation of heat. The higher the air temperature, the lower the humidity and the higher the speed of air movement, the more we will give off heat by evaporation of sweat. We can also give off excess heat with the help of infrared radiation and through direct contact with objects that are colder than us. For example, a table and a chair. As you can see, our heat balance depends on the parameters of microclimate, temperature, humidity and air velocity. For comfortable work and for prevention of diseases, according to the Russian standards, the air temperature at the workplace in the warm season should be from 23 to 25 degrees Celsius. The relative humidity of the air is from 40 to 60 percent and the speed of air movement is about 0.1 meters per second. In the cold season, the air temperature may be slightly less than 22 to 24 degrees Celsius. More people after 20 years begin to see worse. A person on average at the age of 40 begins to see worse by 10% and at the age of 60 by 30% and at the age of 80 visual acuity drops by 50%. To preserve vision, good lighting should be organized in the workplace. The lighting can be natural or artificial. Natural lighting is the elimination of natural sunlight through windows. Artificial lighting is lighting with lamps. Lighting can also be shared. The light source is located in the ceiling and illuminates the entire room. And lighting can be local when the light source is located near the workplace and illuminates a small surface. Different types of electric lamps are used for artificial lighting. Incandescent lamps are now used very rarely. The reason is low efficiency. Only about 5% of energy is spent on lighting and the remaining 95% is spent on heating the air. Halogen lamps are more efficient. When using them, 
up to 20% of energy is spent on lighting. Fluorescent lamps are even more efficient. Up to 25% of energy is spent on lighting. Now these lamps are less popular because they contain mercury and pose a threat to the environment. At this point in time, LED lamps are most common. Their efficiency is up to 80%. We talked about efficiency, but the question is also important for us. How much the light of these lamps are suitable for our vision? In the figure, you can see that the human eye sees best in the green part of the spectrum at night and in the yellow-green part of the spectrum during the daytime. This means that if the green and yellow rays prevail in the light of an artificial light source, it will be good for our vision. Look at the drawing. The spectrum of an incandescent lamp is shown by a black line. This spectrum extends mainly to yellow and orange colors. Thanks to this, the light of an incandescent lamp is in a comfortable zone for us. But an excess of red and orange rays can create problems for the doctor. Ideally, you should examine the patient in the natural light. Unfortunately, the patient can seek medical help even at night. If you look at the patient under the light of the incandescent lamp, you may mistakenly think that the sclera of this eye is yellow. You may mistakenly assume hepatitis. In fact, this is just a distortion of the perception of color due to peculiarities of the spectrum of the incandescent lamp. With a fluorescent lamp, another problem. In the light of a fluorescent lamp, there is an excess of blue and purple rays. Therefore, the patient's skin appears paler than it actually is when illuminated by fluorescent lamps. You may make a mistake and assume anemia. Conclusion. If you are examining a patient under artificial lighting, you should pay attention to the lighting and make an amendment. LED lighting. The best spectrum was possessed by old LEDs, which were made of three cells with red, green and blue colors. Now cheap LEDs covered with phosphor are most often used. The LED itself generates purple light, and the phosphor applied to the surface of the LED takes some of the energy of the purple color and adds other colors to the light. Therefore, the quality of the light spectrum of modern LEDs depends on the quality of the phosphor. But most often, the light of the LED lamps is also dominated by blue and purple rays. The light closest to the sun, our natural source, is generated by incandescent lamps with blue glass. Unfortunately, their low efficiency, less than 1%, does not allow them to be used for lighting. The light of these lamps does not distort colors and is ideal for our vision, but they generate too much infrared thermal radiation. Therefore, such lamps are used only in physiotherapy. For example, to warm up the maxillary sinuses in the treatment of sinusitis. Incandescent lamps have another advantage. This is their reliability. Fluorescent and LED lamps have a very complex structure. Their electronics easily fail. Therefore, the army still prefers to use incandescent lamps. Incandescent lamps can even withstand the electromagnetic pulse from the explosion of a nuclear bomb. In addition to the correct spectrum, other parameters also affect our visual comfort. It is very important for our vision that the lighting is uniform. Uniform in space, the entire room should be well lit. If a part of the room is poorly lit, our vision will experience discomfort. There will be a need to adapt to areas with different levels of lighting. The lighting should be uniform over time. This means that the lamp should not flicker. Flickering is a problem of fluorescent lamps, the light of which pulsates over time. The lighting should be optimal in brightness. It should be sufficient, not excessive. Let's talk about ergonomics. Ergonomics is a science that studies the relationship between a person and different devices. The goal of ergonomics is to create machines, control panels, workplaces with maximum comfort for people. 
The principles of ergonomics are used in the creation of many things, from a scalpel to a spaceship. I will give you a smartphone as an example. When creating a smartphone, anthropometric indicators are taken into account. Its size and the location of the buttons are comfortable for most people. In the production of the smartphone, sensory motor compatibility parameters were used. It does not require you to react too quickly. You have time to respond to system messages. Biomechanical parameters are also taken into account. The size of the button is comfortable for the fingers. Pressing the buttons does not require too much effort. When creating a smartphone, psychophysiological parameters were used. The sound does not annoy you and the shape and color of the font allow you to read it comfortably. The principles of ergonomics allow you to create really comfortable objects. For example, a mouse pad with a pad for the hand. Such a mat allows you to prevent tunnel syndrome. Another example is an ergonomic keyboard. This keyboard provides rest for the hand and allows you to type faster after some training. Ergonomics allows you to comfortably organize your workspace. From the point of view of ergonomics, your workplace can be divided into three zones. The first zone, you can take objects by moving only your hand without moving your whole body. In this area, it is convenient to place items that you need constantly. For example, a ballpoint pen. To take objects in the second zone, you need to move not only your hands, but also your whole body. In this zone, it is advantageous to store items you need every day, but not every minute. To take an item from the third zone, you will have to get up from your chair. In this area, it is better to store items that you do not need every day. If you organize your workplace correctly, you will seriously increase your efficiency. Thank you very much for your attention and see you in the next one.